We're Matteo and Misha, and we're currently on the world's slowest Italian road trip. This is the craziest food market we've ever been to. Traveling to all 20 regions of Italy, hopefully completing them all before we die of old age. I didn't think we'd actually be doing something like this. Two years and one and a half regions later, we're still in region number two, Tuscany. In our previous Tuscan episode, we visited the iconic city of Pisa and squashed the birthday cake, where we had a trippy experience climbing its famous leaning tower. Cheers, darling. Cheers. Dink. Today's adventure takes us to the tiny town of Pistoia, where we envision what life was like in a 500-year-old fortress before Matteo completely oh malfunctions. God. <laughs> I'm literally tearing up. Subscribe to follow the adventure. And we're off on another adventure today. The walls of Luca are looking a little gray. I'm just kidding. Okay, wow. I don't know why I'm singing. Um, <laughs> we're off to the train station. The train is in 10 minutes and it's a a little bit of a cloudy morning, but the sun is coming through now. I absolutely love the walk down here. I mean, I said it on our way to Pisa too, but these trees on the wall, it's just so peaceful and serene. And there's so many people just out for a little morning stroll. It's lovely, but we're out for the day. So let's get. Platform four, here we go. Where will it stop? Where will it stop? And... Ooh, got it. We forgot to validate our tickets. And now you can't, it won't let you do it. Once the journey has begun, it's not letting us validate when we say manage. Uh oh, that's not good. Oh. Made it. Okay, so Mateo and I, as much as we've traveled on trains and made the videos, sometimes we can uh, also forget when we're a little sleepy in the morning. And we bought our tickets before we left our apartment, but we forgot to validate them. We were so tired after our flight, we even remembered to validate them. So it's shocking to me that we forgot this morning, but the train was already moving. And I was like, oh, let's, uh, Mateo, did you validate our tickets? He's like, no, let me do that quick. But when we opened the app, the option to check in and validate goes away once the train has left your departure point. So the QR code was still there, but there was no option to validate it. So <laughs> I don't know like how okay this is, but because it wasn't validated, we were able to change the train time. So Mateo just quickly went to our ticket and changed it to the like the train leaving an hour later. So from my understanding, <laughs> all these trains are the same. Like the, we were the ones that all cost the same or on the same routes. You can take any of them with the same ticket. I think it's within four hours of your ticket. Yeah. So I just booked the one after because you can change the time if you haven't checked and you either get compensated or change the time. I just changed the time to 12.30 and then I validated it. So when he came around, it said I had a ticket. It just wasn't for our train, it was for the next train. But yeah. I mean, I can't use it again after he scanned it. So yeah. it seems to have worked. Ironically, we knew it. Like, yeah. I was like, watch, this is the one time we're gonna get asked. because. A lot of the times you don't get asked, but of course the one time we forget, it's when they come around to check. So it did say validated, it was just for the later train and he scanned it and there didn't seem to be a problem. I'm not sure what would have happened if we just left it and just like didn't validate it. I'm not sure if we would have been fined or something. So I was hoping that yeah. if they scan it and validate it, that it will accept it because you still bought a ticket, but... I we don't know. So if that's yeah. happened to you, just like comment below and let us know. Like if, if you forgot to validate your online ticket, did they fine you? Like we actually don't know, but that's how we got around it. And it seemed to work. I mean, we still paid the same amount, still did our civic duty, <laughs> but yeah, just a tip. Hey, look, old walls. This street is called Via New Urban Walls. By new, do they just mean like 500 years old instead of 800? <laughs> yeah, <I guess> so. <laughs> there you go, folks. Modern walls here. Modern walls. Pistoia is known as the city of greenhouses because it has a thriving horticulture industry. I'm not going to pretend to be excited about that. I'm not really, I'm not a green thumb. Is that an international term? Do you guys say green thumb? Uh, 
I think so. Okay, I'm not a green thumb, I ain't no gardener. But we'll see how green and beautiful the city gets. If all else fails, we will go and see a greenhouse. Don't give me that look, Misha. You don't want to see any greenhouses? Oh, look, greenhouses. <laughs> Very small, small, small town. We should be done in about two hours. <laughs> but the fun thing you need to know about Pistoia is it's famous because it is part of Tuscany and the Renaissance and the Medici. I don't that's believe the, it. That's your summary about around about there. They do have a pretty city center, so we're going to be taking that out. But yeah, I see us moving through the city pretty quickly. Look, look here. So maps suck because like when you look at it, look at how nice and green it looks. And then the green doesn't match the green of the grass. It's pretty, it's it's still green for October. Yeah. What do you mean? It's been, uh, I guess so. It's mid-October now. Piazza della Resistanza. We're currently on the way to a fort that's here on the side. But so far, this big park isn't giving us the most pretty vibes of the city. It's just like, just not the prettiest park that we've been in. A little sketchy. <laughs> a, little, a little, little bit like it looks, it just looks, it's a sad looking park to be honest with you. I hope the center of the city gets a little bit more exciting. I do like forts, so we are going to go see a fort. There we go. It closes in about an hour and a half, so that's why it's our first stop of the day. This cafe does not look too open. Mateo wanted a coffee, but we'll oh, see no, if anything... I, wo I woke up the moment. <laughs> you had to protect me through this park. <laughs> okay. That was a joke. But that not really. Joke. Fort. <laughs> <laughs> Fortezza d'Aqua, I read something along the lines of it's how they used to get water into the city or they turned it into how they get water into the city but I'm sure we'll find out. Oh, it's got a free entrance to see the fort of water. Huh. If, you just, if you just step to the left with me. Ingresso gratuito means that it's free. Fortress of Santa Barbara. An important example of military architecture built over the foundations of an earlier 14th century stronghold. What's important to note here is who it was built by. Medici. The same man sitting in our piazza in Pisa. The same man sitting in most of the piazzas you come across in Tuscany. Coming from the same family that controlled most of Tuscany. The Medici. What's important to note though is that he instilled the job of increasing, enlarging the fort size to a man named Bernardo Buontalenti. And if you've been following our journey so far, you would know that he is the man that is responsible for the creation of gelato in Florence. How those two things are related, I mean, that's, that's, a, that's a far line, but he was also responsible for a lot of the architecture in Florence and throughout Tuscany. So when you're in Florence, there's a Bontalenti flavor. It's the OG gelato flavor. We got it at La Strega Nicciola, so that's the dude. And let's go see this fort. The fort is only open for about five hours of the day. It closes at 1.30. Whoa, I mean, this is... Crazy. This is so overgrown out here. It's very cool though. Well, just on that note, you can clearly tell which cities get more money to keep their restoration work up. As you can tell, like in the moat down here, it's not the most, I mean, it's a bit overgrown. Whereas like in Catania, when we saw that the big fort that was there, it was completely like trimmed. It's just a bit sad that like there's not actually enough money flowing through the country to keep everything that's 800 years old and 1000 years old up to scratch. But I don't know, maybe one day they'll figure out a process that can do this foster or get an influx of money when we appreciate history a little bit more. I think they should get the lawnmower from Campo Santo, <laughs> from Pisa. That little guy could just... Get some serious work done. Look down there. What? Is it a cat? I hope it's a cat. What is it? Oh, it's a cat! You scared it away. Oh, no, 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 come back. <laughs> you scared it away. Dang it. I love cats. Yeah, this is, this needs some tending to. But it is pretty. Oh, 
Oh, okay. So there's a show of water, the fort of water, which is through there. Mm. Or if we want to take our walk, we go up the stairs. Let's take a look around the corner. Huh? <laughs> it's you. Look. Oh, I'm so sorry. I did it again. I scared him. It's our same little kitty. and stuff and explanations and drawings but seems each room it's just in Italian but uh, oh, it's a nice drone shot okay well let's continue so there's several of these rooms just keeps going Reminds me of a. Uh... Whoa. Okay, for any Outlander fans, this reminds me of like the very first episode of Outlander when they're walking through Castle Leoc and they're trying to guess like what the rooms would be. <laughs> like when this was actually used back in the day. Look at how old this door is. Like this is. This is crazy. Doesn't it give you vi Outlander vibes? Um... These walls are so high. Hello. <laughs> Say echoey. It's crazy. Look at how, like, this place is massive. I mean, this just looks like ancient. Just so, so ancient. My understanding and what those videos from the split second I saw, this had something to do with the, the water. I can't entirely tell you what it is, but it looks like something that would have water underneath, doesn't it? Mm, it does. It's much prettier down here. And we still got to climb to the what top of that? the walls. <laughs> oh, I think that's where we entered from. We we're on across the way on that bridge. So the thing you have to understand about this fortress is that its history is strongly linked with the unification of Italy. From my understanding, this fort was used as a prison, a barracks, and a couple other things because it's been here for a good 600 years. It is just so sad that the upkeep of this is like essentially totally impossible because it's just too large and there's too many of them around the country. But you can just imagine what this was like back in the day, like a bustling fort, just like the movies from my imagination. Wow. It's got like the pin in the back. <laughs> <laughs> There's a lot of... Get into yeah. a spider. Ew! You literally, it's like shaking. Doesn't that make sense? Why don't you maybe slide? Maybe. Yeah, maybe they would slide it. It is the same size as the... What? That concerns me when I see that, because that makes me think someone was like strung up. Or chandelier. <laughs> oh, or that. That's less depressing than what I thought. Hello. Hello. This is a well. I wonder what this section was. Because you could almost imagine that like, during the day, maybe that like, prisoners could be locked up here. And they get their water from here, hang out here. Not too sure. It's nice that they got the garden. Yeah. <laughs> if this was... Well, this is like a little bit of sun. They blocked the door. Oh, I don't know. Maybe, maybe yeah, but they could scale the wall, though, so... I don't know. 
I think my favorite part of being here is just imagining <laughs> we're just totally like making up what this could have been. Whenever you see arches above a door such as that with bricks, they can be like that because bricks have a high compression rate. However, they do not have a high strength when you pull them apart. So when stacked like that, they become stronger. And that's why arches above doors look like that. It's also interesting to note how the walls are made out of half brick, half rock, half stone. There was a fort, I think, in this area before this major one was built. Maybe they used the stones from the previous one and kind of half bricked, half stoned, building it up. It's a fort. <laughs> Ready to go walk the walls? I mean, it has like a chapel. Oh, I didn't even see that. It's very simple, but the frescoes are very nice. I'm guessing it's the chapel. I mean, I don't think it was the pub. Such a massive space. You look so small in this large area. This is where Jacobo had his little fire roasting his goat on a spit. Is that right? About to feed his army goat stew. Oh. <laughs> so now we are going to go up and climb the steps. I'm happy the sun came out. Is that for the horses, do you think? I'm just kidding. You just did the same thing. Oh. Which way do we go? You vote this way? Yeah. We'll circle back. Wow, you can really see yeah. how dented. Like, look at how <laughs> used these steps are. Oh my goodness. It's pretty cool. That's cool. <laughs> you can hear the church bells in the distance. Whoa. That moat's quite a lot bigger from up here. Oh yeah, that is, that's a drop. Oh, so peaceful up here. We're the only people in this entire place. Something makes me believe it's not the most popular place to visit here at the fort. We're not complaining. <laughs> what a strange... No, but this would have been where they was... protected from. You think? Yeah. It looks like a prison cell to me, like top of Palazzo Vecchio. I don't know. Arrows and stuff. Oh, I guess. It's not the most strategically clever place to have a prison cell. <laughs> Maybe not, I don't know. <laughs> These walls are massive. Look at this. This part's blocked off, but they're seriously huge. Oh, okay, I see. So th that's where we entered. That's the walkway we entered on. So we're quite a bit higher than that. Ooh, it's like a maze. feels very fortress-like. You can look over. You think this is where they use their bows and arrows? They're just like... I don't know what that is. So like from here. Oh, that's crazy. They had like access for protection, I guess. So we can't climb the tower. That's why there was a door there. So you can imagine the guy standing there as people come along the like what's it called the rampart yay ye, who goes there <laughs> okay i should put you in like a costume and maybe we could just reenact what we think happened here yeah. this is much larger than i initially thought it would be it's really nice though so peaceful yo this place just keeps going like look at that we're still moving I wonder if those are like the stables. Well, maybe. Yeah, that would make sense because they're like pens. Yeah. Want to walk down there? Not really. Oh, 
after a further thought, scrapped the idea of stables. What would make sense as a fort is if you had your like your wood for winter, for the fires, if you had your weapons, your arms, everything, your cannons, whatever you needed at the ready in the storage positions. Here we are theorizing. <laughs> Ooh. Ooh. Whoa. Oh my god. This, this is growing so much it's it's literally come inside the window bars. Okay. This fort is pretty large, but I mean a lot of it looks pretty similar. It's not like there's anything like super special happening in here. It's just a fort that's been left to kind of grow with vegetation. Cool nonetheless. Hear ye, hear ye. Someone make me a cup of coffee and some cake. Now we're on the home stretch of my cribs. What's it? <laughs> MTV cribs. MTV cribs. You would live in a place like this. Yeah. Sick. Sick, sick, sick does just keep going and going and going done at the fort it felt almost like a private tour because we were literally the only two people in there other than a couple of workers in the office <laughs> yeah, shame they look really bored like this is there's like no there's a, literally we didn't see a single other like tourist person looking around so it was really cool though i actually love that very different from stuff we've seen recently so so we came here first because it closes at one so that's in about 30 minutes so we wanted to make sure that we got a chance to see it but now it's time for coffee and a little snack the day's really heating up. It was a little bit nippy this morning, but it's getting warm. Alrighty, now we're on our way to the center of town. We've come across, you guessed it, a church. One of the many in the area. That's a cool horse statue over there. The Piazza of Giuseppe Garibaldi. No way, I, I don't That must be him it. on a horse. That Fiat's all decked out for Halloween. How cute. This Fiat's literally like... <laughs> That's adorable. It looks like it's dressed for a Halloween wedding. That is so cute. If you've literally watched any one of the past videos that we just made, I mentioned Garibaldi being in every single city. He's literally in every single city. There's a square, a statue, a street named after him. Fun fact, what I learned in Paris a good six years ago, if I remember correctly, when there is a monument with a person on a horse, if both feet of the horse are in the air, it means that that person died in battle. But as you can tell, Garibaldi has one foot down on the ground of the horse, which means that he did not die in battle. He actually died of old age on his little island off Sardinia. So while doing some research on where to eat, a lot of places that I was Googling were coming up as either temporarily closed or permanently closed. And walking around, I mean, it's almost 1 p.m. right now and it feels very quiet and like kind of dead in a way. So I'm not sure if it was post COVID or what, but that's just on these smaller streets. We'll see now when we get to the main square. It's like a little tower back there. It's just very quiet. Ooh, that's pretty though. <laughs> Oh, 
Oh, this is cute. Piazza della Sala is a square where they have a market every day, from my understanding. Fresh fruits and vegetables, by the looks of it. Mm -hmm. Some cafes. Ooh, those pigeons are having having a good uh, snack over there. The town is so small that the place you researched yesterday is behind you. <laughs> oh, here we go. So this was one of the only places I looked up that was actually still operational. All right, we're in need of a coffee. Yeah, <laughs> yeah uh, in need of... This is a restaurant. True. Okay, so this is more of a, I guess, a full-on restaurant. We're just looking for a little coffee and a snack. But if you're here, that place apparently has really good reviews. Voronoi Risto Cafeteria. <laughs> Maybe we'll just hit up this little cafe here. Or pane de zucchero. When the word zucchero is in it, I'm in. Because that is sugar. That one says Old Prague. Maybe it's a pub. Yeah. Could be a pub. I also researched this place, Cafe Le Blanc. I need a coffee. So Mateo's in desperate need of a coffee, so we're gonna come here. Cool. Buongiorno. That looks amazing, actually, though. I'm gonna make an air again and get pistachio on top. I might get one of these. That looks so good. Are you hungry? Yeah. They've got a bunch of little cookies here. These all look delicious. I'm gonna get this. Okay. It's bad to put the focaccia with that. I know. I was like, oh, that looks so good. Ready? Let's go. Very excited about this. It's a focaccia with a ham and mozzarella. So you can discredit the fort looking side of the city a little bit because once you come towards the center, it starts to look more like a little Tuscan town. So that park in that doesn't count. The center is starting to look a bit more normal. Right now we're in the piazza next to the main piazza, so we're gonna go check that out in a bit. See the Duomo, see what else they have to offer, see what else we get up to today. Throughout our travels, sometimes we get so swept up in trying to get the videos recorded that we don't just stop to sit at a cafe and just literally take in the atmosphere. So this is a nice little change, just chilling here, having a little bite, having some Coke, having the flies on my face, but it is a good change. Yay, I'm so hungry. I hope it tastes as good as it looks. Mm. This tastes exactly like I was hoping it was gonna taste. It's salty, it's crispy. Ham and mozzarella are just like gooey on the inside. Yum. I second that choice halfway through my meal. Mateo was too hungry to wait for me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it had my sugar fix. You don't put the whole thing in. Oh yeah, every last grain. After the bowl, but... Okay, that's a bit of <laughs> They seem to be either, I think they're breaking down from this morning's market. Maybe it's a morning market. I think it's a morning market. That was delicious, definitely hit the spot. But now we're off to see a museum that Matteo just realized closes in about 30 minutes. It's in an old hospital. Oh, this street is so cute. Hopefully we'll get into this museum before we see the Duomo. All right. Quickly going here, we'll pass through the main square on the way there. Ooh, look at that in the Pisan style. And that's the Duomo in front of us there. It's so quiet. All right, we're gonna have to move fast if we see it, so we're gonna come back here. Okay, so we're gonna come back to the Duomo. We're just gonna see if this museum's open first. After walking around a little bit more, we've come to the realization that this is just your quaint little Tuscan town. It's got the Tuscan streets, Tuscan monuments, a little bit of Renaissance here and there. But so far, nothing too different from what we've experienced. But we're gonna just check out one last thing that I think closes soon. Is this it? Yeah. Ooh. Monday to Friday, closes at two. Okay. I don't know if we can know. What time is it? So that's not actually the thing I was looking for. That's the museum of the ancient hospital that was here. There's an underground like section that has like an underground stream and stuff running through it. But from my understanding, it's not just free to visit. You have to have a scheduled time. So you have to go, I think you said the next time's at 4.30, so. But we're gonna check. Yeah, we're gonna check. This is like literally a hospital. So what did we want? So this is what we wanted to see. So it's underneath. That actually looks really cool. The whole underground of the hospital. What so it looks say? like we only got tours at 10.30, 11.30, 3, 4.30. So and I think that's we have only to... an hour and 15 minutes. 
but I don't think we're gonna hang around here for that long. But apparently it's cool. Yeah, if you're here, just make note of that. This hospital legit looks like it's from like the 1920s. Oh, wait, it says there that it's a hub for the vaccination of babies. Well, there we go. So unfortunately, we won't be doing that today, and this other museum's already closed, he said. But if you're here, yeah, apparently it's cool. Pistoia Sototerraneo is what it's called. And the city's tiny, so you literally take a 10-minute walk from the station to get to this hospital. But look at that facade. I know, I was just gonna say, uh, it's stunning. Wait, how'd the Fiat end up over here? And now the Halloween Fiat is on this street, unless there's more than one of them. Oh, I want it so bad. That is so cute. All right, where to next? We're gonna go into Piazza del Duomo and see what they have to offer up there. From my understanding, the bell tower is closed today. It's only open on Friday, Saturday, Sunday for like limited hours. So I'm guessing the theme of Pistoia for now is that things are open for very limited times on very limited days. But it but, is October. Yeah, and there are a couple other museums around here and that, but like nothing that really piqued our interest to kind of see this time around. And so we're gonna take a look at the Duomo Square, see what we have to find. And just like that, <laughs> exactly. we turn the corner and we're in the Duomo Square again. This Duomo Piazza is actually very large and very open. I mean, we have been spoiled for choice on the amount of places we've seen. It is a very quaint, cute little town, I think. If we could see it from fresh eyes and not having seen other Tuscan towns, it's actually really cool with its black and white marble buildings that are all just like the Renaissance, man. All these Renaissance buildings in the square. Oh, there's a free entrance to the baptistry. Okay, well, I'm loving that the theme of Pistoia is also free entrance. Because we're in the baptistry. <laughs> Literally the whole point of this building is to baptize people before they enter the main church. From my understanding, there's supposed to be a large fresco of the baptism of Christ, but it does not look like it's here. From my understanding, that metal work over there is super important. It's very confusing because I don't know whether it's in the cathedral or whether it's currently being restored. I don't, I don't know, it's not very clear. Or maybe it's this place that's being restored. I'm not too sure. It's an echoing. You sound like a bird, or was that a bird? Was that you, or was that a bird? Oh. You do need tickets for the cathedral and the bell tower. The Campanile is the bell tower. So those would be the prices. Alrighty, and that's us done. It's definitely more beautiful from the outside. The inside just looks like a massive brick dome. But yeah, pretty nonetheless. So right now it's October and the bell tower has limited hours, so it's only open on the weekends. But if you're here, you can climb it and you get panoramic views of the city. So just check the opening times before your visit if you want to do that. All right, now listen carefully. There are a couple of saints that are mentioned here in this piazza. The baptistry of San Giovanni in Corte. I think that means in court in Italian. I don't really know the difference between in Corte or not in Corte, but that's what it's called. You have got the Cattedrale di San Zeno. That is the cathedral of Saint, what English word would Zeno be? Zeno just reminds me of like, backpack. <laughs> <laughs> Cathedrale di San Zeno. However, that's not the patron saint of the city. The patron saint of the city is San Jacopo, Saint James. He is featured next to San Zeno on top of the cathedral. The two statues you see on the top, one is Saint James, one is San Zeno. 
I don't know why they got so many saints associated with things, but that's what they are. When the street sweeper comes. My fun facts are gonna have to wait. They see me rolling. They hate him. Right and dirty. What? I googled it. San Zeno is Saint Zeno in English. The patron saint of fishermen and anglers in the city of Verona. <laughs> How it all links together, the Lord alone knows. The but Lord does know. <laughs> But apparently a bunch of cathedrals are actually named after St. Zeno. I'm not gonna lie, I have uh, went to Catholic school for 12 years. Had religion class every day for those 12 years. And I never remember. To be fair, there's a lot of patron saints of stuff. But that was, this is a new one that I've learned today. He's not the patron saint of backpacks like I thought. Lot Zaino. And we're back to our regularly scheduled programming. The cathedral's origins date back to the 4th century when a Christian church was first constructed on the site. The current cathedral, however, dates back to the 10th century. Though a lot of what we can see today has actually been restored several times over several centuries and reflects a mix of architectural styles including, you guessed it, Romanesque and Gothic elements. The two saints, San Zeno and San Jacopo, that are on top of the cathedral, are historically linked to each other since it was the Bishop Zeno who acquired the important relic of San Jacopo from the city of Santiago de Compostela in Spain. Our story is just becoming a multi-national, multi-sanctual story here. This is quite a complex Is that story like the Camino together. Trail? Because if it's, it would have something to do with him. Because people walk the, the pilgrimage. The, oh, dog. <laughs> Okay, and we're back. The Campanile di Pistoia is 67 meters high and there are 200 stairs. Dates back to the 13th century and is a... Don't care about that. Characterized by its Romanesque design. Who gives a shit? <laughs> <laughs> Delete in the edit. <laughs> oh my god. Stop. <laughs> Stop. The tower is famous for its Romanesque and Gothic styles and also has a bunch of important bells on the top. I don't know how I can keep explaining bell towers, guys. I'm actually running out of like, <laughs> like words here. <Yeah. laughs> but that's what it has. <laughs> Literally tearing up. I'm sorry, guys. We've seen so many towers <laughs> and so many churches. I think we need to start being more selective on what we check. We're going to visit the cities for you and show you what the vibes and that are like. I don't think we can visit so many churches that we have in the past. We're struggling. <laughs> Literally tearing up. This is a Okay. Pistoia is perfect for you if you want to have le way less crowds than like, let's say, Pisa or Florence. <laughs> oh, I saw him at a cafe earlier. I remember looking at his pants. All right, so you guys just saw the town's jester. <laughs> <laughs> The source of entertainment here in Pistoia. All right, so Pistoia essentially summarized, if you're looking for a way less crowded city than Pisa or let's say Florence, then come here. This is like real authentic, quiet Tuscan vibes. Michelle and I do like an energetic place. So this is as beautiful as it is. And as many interesting buildings and information there is about the city, we do like a place with a bit of vibe. And so, we might be heading out soon and going to check out something really cool. Stay tuned for our next video. All right, so I did do my research. I did check as many times as I could, but the cathedral is currently closed until about 3.30, which is still another hour. And we don't actually have anything else to do right now. So we're gonna head towards the train station and hop onto another cute little town down the road. Comment below, let us know if the inside of the San Zeno Cathedral is absolutely stunning and worth a visit. Ready? Yeah. Want our train? We got to run to the train station. Uh, train's in about 15 minutes. It's 11 minute walk to the station. 
I don't have to run too much, but we're on the way there now. I will say the one thing I do appreciate about this city is that we like didn't really spend money going into it. Okay, if the, if the place wasn't closed and it was open, we actually got to go in for free. So wasn't mad about that. Uh, it is fall, so maybe, you know, that has something to do with the hours of operation. But just double check if you are planning on coming here. Uh, just, uh, if you have a list of the things you want to do. At least we showed you from the outside. <laughs> Comment below and let us know if you've been in any of these places. Let us know what you thought about them. But, in summertime, it probably is banging. Yeah. yeah. And it's probably way more refreshing than Florence or Pisa that are packed, packed, packed with people. Yeah. So we'll give it that. But on to the next adventure, two towns over. One of my favorite things on Italian streets is that like you can park in whatever direction you please. <laughs> Why, you don't do that in the States? No, uh -huh. <laughs> we got rules. In South Africa, we don't have, you don't even have to park on the street, you can park on the stairs. To be fair, they do that here too. We're off to have fun. What did you just do? I Tim? just told the phone to remind me to check in in eight minutes so that I don't get fined on the train. I'm a fast learner. Alright, <laughs> <laughs> right, we seem to have hit the school rush. <laughs> and low as our age. <laughs> yeah, I feel part like of, part of the squad I feel now. like I'm 14 now. In our next episode, we find a surreal fairy tale like town. It actually feels a bit like Vegas, but like in Europe. We haven't even walked in here for like two minutes and I'm already obsessed with it. Where we drink from the fountain of youth and ride a crazy steep funicular to a hilltop haven. These people look like they're just living their absolute best life. Yo. Subscribe to follow the adventure. Bye! Bye.